Hello everyone. Been a while since I made a video um, for you all. Um, I've been busy. I just have been slowed down a little bit because there was a mishap that uh, kind of a freak mishap that didn't have anything to do with casting, but uh, it ended up putting me in this. So after uh, half a dozen screws and some plates and uh, having my foot in the air for eight weeks. Uh, I finally got to the point where I could get off crutches and get my hands back. And uh, about the only thing I could do during that time to keep me from going absolutely crazy was uh, improve my skills uh, in pattern making and programming and whatnot. So I'll show you a few of the things that um, I was working on during then, but I actually have a different topic for this video that we'll eventually get to. So. First things uh, first, this is just kind of a, a sampling of some of the things that during that time uh, I was working on. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of fond of these inline carbs and make a lot of parts for them. And uh, you can uh, probably remember the uh, four-part series on, on the intake manifold that I made that used these. So part of the project was just a bunch of little pieces um, for the linkage. Uh, in that system. Um, these are bell crank uh, arms on that that I made a few of. Um, I actually machined up one that's on the intake right now. And then uh, other little linkage things. Uh, I made these uh, idle stop um, arms for each end of, of the carburetor. You can see the pattern with the tree structure for them and all the finished little machine parts. I made a bunch of those. And then I've got, uh, I've got some uh, acquaintances who have show cars that have these carbs on them and they want to run tall stacks their their uh, retro mod custom uh, cars show cars and they got a pair of these carbs on them and they want to run these stacks that you see so uh, i made uh, these stack adapters that'll uh, this is just a, a model of it that i made a few years ago but uh, you can see that it just bolts right to the car and then it's got pinch clamps and uh, receives these uh, velocity stacks here, these long stacks, and I can trim them to any length and they just clamp in there and they bolt on and bolt off the carb just with two bolts uh, on that. So those guys really like them. And this was kind of a setup part for the casting um, for them. And here's uh, one of the actual castings ready for machining. And then uh, for other uh, customer or acquaintance that I have. Um, in fact, uh, for the, uh, <clears throat> the intake manifold project, if you ran a pair of these, this is a uh, bell mouth uh, filter base. I haven't cast it uh, yet, but uh, this would be interface with the air filters that you saw in that uh, induction system four part series video. But uh, this has got the bell mouth transition, uh, just like a velocity stack but you can run um, the air filters I made for that system um, around the perimeter of it. And then on the bottom, it's got the same type of pinch clamps that just bolt on to straight sections uh, of, of stack. So you just cut straight sections to any height that you want and you can bolt on an air filter assembly with velocity stacks. Of course, you gotta have either a, a tall hood scoop or a hole in your hood to, to run that because that gets uh, way up there. But um, that's just, uh, a couple parts and then one of the other things just to kind of expand my skills I had a fellow that uh, he um, he had a Joe Gibbs racing uh, special edition uh, Silverado truck and those Joe Gibbs uh, units they're kind of like a Ford Lightning they had a supercharged uh, V8 in them uh, all kinds of performance options and then they had um, uh, trim and interior packages with them and they had this uh, Joe Gibbs racing logo badging all over the place and one of the places was um, the wheel centers. Um, they had custom wheels for that package and in the wheel center they had the Joe Gibbs uh, racing logo and he had, uh, they're not available uh, anymore and he'd thrown one of the wheel centers um, off a wheel on a road trip one time and, and uh, wanted me to make a couple for him. And it was an opportunity for me to do some um, import, some logos, do some engraving, and moreover, engrave onto um, uh, convex or non-flat surfaces. So I learned how to do that with the CAM program. This was just a setup part for me testing the program. And then this was a setup um, part, a sample part 
where um, I actually ran the program and this is the actual uh, wheel center for that that's machined up. I didn't spend any time polishing uh, this one, but uh, I made a few of them, uh, a couple of them for him and he was pretty happy with them. And in the meantime, I got uh, my skills developed for doing engraving on irregular surfaces. So anyway, I tried to stay busy uh, during that period and actually get some stuff done. But that's not the, uh, the subject of this video. The subject of this video is actually another part that uh, goes with that uh, um, custom uh, independent runner induction system that I mentioned in the four part series. And uh, that'll be up here next. So let's talk about that. All right, now for what this video is really about, and that is uh, making a timing cover, an extended timing cover um, for the intake manifold that I've done the four port part series on. <clears throat> because of how the runners are laid out in the intake manifold, it covers up the uh, distributor hole in the block. So um, back in the old days, uh, in the around 69, 70 Trans Am days, Ford built extended timing covers <clears throat> to place the distributor in. So I needed to do that for this intake manifold. And uh, this here is an ordinary um, small block Ford timing cover. Um, when I started this project, I thought, ah, oh, you know, no big deal. I'll build an extension onto this and put a distributor uh, boss in it. It'd be no big deal. But this part touches almost every working system of the engine, except probably the induction and exhaust system. But if you think about it, um, you've got the reciprocating assembly uh, here uh, on that. You've got the uh, uh, timing chain and timing gear on the cam gear here, and also the fuel pump eccentric. You've got the fuel pump mount, so you're touching the fuel system. Um, you've got the uh, water pump mounted on the outside of that. So, I mean, you've, you're touching the reciprocating assembly, the cooling system, the fuel system, um, and you got the oil pan mount down here. You've got a lot of features on this part and a lot of dimensional interface uh, with, the, uh, with the engine. So I got into the project and I was like, wow, there's a lot going on here. So um, I ended up having to break it into a few pieces to make it. Most of the machining is just two and a half D machining done on uh, my CNC router. Um, I'll show you some pictures of the plaques that they were machined in, but I don't know about you guys. I, there, I could show you the patterns being cut, but there's not a whole lot to it bores the heck out of me sitting there watching CNC machines swipe out tool paths. So I guess you can just take my word that the CNC machine, the CNC router is cutting these out. But here's the major pieces. The two major pieces um, is the lower timing cover uh, here which is very similar um, to uh, the, the common ordinary small block Ford timing cover. Um, and you can see um, the features that are in this here. Um, <clears throat> it's all 2D machining except uh, this area in here that had change in height in the chamfer around the oil seal. Um, that was actually a small area of 3D uh, machining on that. And, uh, I omitted uh, some of the pieces, these things you see in the foreground here, these small little pieces of boss are things that I'm going to glue on afterwards because it was just getting so crazy, the amount of features on this part and programming, it was just easier for me to cut them and, and <clears throat> hand place them after the fact. And I did have to make a couple of compromises. I mean, mostly I can only uh, commonly get the foam uh, board in two inch thick pieces. It just so happens that um, this part is just under four inches thick, so I could uh, I could do it in two two inch thick pieces. And also, it needed to be broke in the middle anyway because I'll show you in a minute the way it goes together. It has undercuts and so on that can't be reached with a with a three axis uh, machine. So <clears throat> I cut out this part, but it was machined front and back. Um, I just had alignment dials in the plaque so I could uh, register on those to do the front and back machining. And then this is the upper section um, that interfaces with the, uh, with the water pump. And this is what actually extends the timing cover two inches forward and, and relocates the distributor um, almost four inches forward of the original position because it's nearly two and a half inches um, worth of movement from the front of the block 
and it's about an inch and a half. The distributor set about an inch and a half back rearward into the block. So this, um, when done, will actually move the distributor forward almost four inches, and there's an extension on the camshaft with a cam gear that interfaces with the distributor that mounts right here. But uh, <clears throat> you can see then that uh, the first uh, piece of the assembly um, is to put it together like this. Move this out of the way here. Then uh, that gives you a good idea of what the uh, timing cover assembled will look like. And the same thing, if I put it on the back here, you can kind of get an idea of that. So the next uh, uh, video segment, I'll have assembled this and put all the pieces onto it. But there's, you can see a hole here. There's a few other pieces that get uh, added to this. Um, the distributor tunnel, um, these pieces I machined separately uh, of that. And uh, they fit uh, up here like this. And then there's a boss on the inside that goes um, in there. And then there's the tail shaft boss um, that goes down here. Oops, like this. Oops, like that. And then there's a bunch of uh, <clears throat> little pieces. Well, not a bunch, but a few um, of the little pieces. Um, I had to, uh, because of the height of the... Uh, um, foam, I had machined the fuel pump flange um, in two pieces and I'll have to go back in here with the secondary and cut the tunnel out on that. And then the rest of them uh, are just uh, little bosses that are there to make sure that there's enough machine stock um, for, for the uh, threaded holes down here <clears throat> in the oil pan. And then this little doohickey is just uh, the boss for the dipstick um, tube on that. And lastly, this was a uh, patch of mine. You can see Right here, um, I had mistakenly machined the height of this at the height of the inside tunnel, which left no wall thickness there. So I just made myself a little patch piece and stuck that in there and changed the program for the next time. But uh, easy enough. They say, you know, you can also gauge by how well you can fix your screw up. So that one was pretty easy as far as uh, um, foul ups to fix on that. So anyway, that's kind of a <clears throat> quick overview of uh, the extended timing cover. Let me uh, stick the pieces together and do a little detailing and I'll get back with you and see how we did. All right, everyone, I'm back with you. I managed to uh, stick all the pieces together and do a little uh, detail work on it and I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Um, let me just show you some of that uh, here, what we were talking about. So this area down here, these little bosses, the dipstick boss, and these little caps here are things that I just made and stuck, um, hand placed and uh, then filleted them in with a little bit of fillet wax. and. Uh, it did fine, and I did uh, do the uh, fuel pump tunnel there that you can see, and then uh, added the uh, distributor um, boss embossment for the distributor mounts, both on the outside and on the inside there that you can see, and this is the uh, mounting boss for the tail shaft uh, there. So uh, got all those pieces in there and a couple other little bosses for the oil pan holes and then another little kind of a detail is is that you can see this on the uh, on the oil pan seal gland um, this style of oil seal has got a little tang that goes up in there and I uh, made a program that did a special lead in and lead out for the tool to do the undercut here but of course I couldn't cut that pocket uh, up in there so um, I just did that with a razor knife and some hand work and touched it up a little bit. And outside of that, uh, it's going to be ready to go here. Um, it's uh, a little sanding on it, a little detail work, but uh, it's a nice uh, pattern and uh, I'm really looking forward to casting it. It's going to be a neat part. And you can probably see here in the background, um, I did go ahead and cut out the... Uh, the gates um, for it as well, since I had all the geometry and all the locations uh, of all the bosses, it was pretty much a snap. 
um, to do that. And uh, you get CNC accuracy and a nice gating system. So um, they go like this here. You can see. Uh, so they feed all the heavy uh, embossed areas um, on the part. And there's one for the other side that does the same thing. So everywhere there is a solid boss that uh, is pretty meaty. Um, it's a, got a three quarter inch uh, gate that meets about a three quarter by three quarter runner. And then I'll, I'll join them together up here after I uh, dip coat it on that. But um, uh, I'll show you after I dip coat it, but um, I'll probably just take two little blocks of uh, wood and glue them on the ends here because it gives me something sturdy uh, to handle it by. And then after the dip coat dries, I can just cut those off of there and, and install the rest of the gating. So uh, this one's getting pretty close to becoming metal. We'll join back up with you a little later. Hello everyone, I'm back with you. Um, I did manage to get the uh, pattern coated and prepped and ready to pour. Um, you see it's sitting here. Um, just a quick look at it here, you can see it's uh, all covered in slurry on that, both inside and out. I did uh, attach these uh, pieces of particle board here just for handling. And as I mentioned before, the feet for it to sit on um, for drying. And I'll cut both of these off um, right before I put it in the mold. And when it's in the mold, then I'll go ahead and glue the, uh, the gating um, on it and, and attach the sprue because um, those things are just kind of awkward and dangling around out there and they don't need to be there until you're ready to pour. So I always attach those things last. Um, I've, I've omitted the, uh, the actual dipping of the part. Um, I try to keep these videos under certainly under a half hour um, if I can. And 20 minutes is better just because when I watch videos, I kind of lose my will to live when things get longer than that. Um, so I don't repeat things. Um, like I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna show you um, the actual pour or the demolding because it's always the same as it is on the rest of my videos. So for those things, and particularly, um, I appreciate all the positive comments and uh, the uh, number of comments and questions have really picked up a lot here in the last uh, month or so. Um, so much so it's hard for me to keep up with them. So if you have questions um, about some of the things that seem to recur, like the coating materials or the pattern construction methods or the pattern materials, you know, or the materials that I use. Um, please take in the, the rest of the videos um, on my channel on those subjects. And if you still can't uh, get the information that you want from them, go ahead and, and uh, post the question and I'll, I'll try to reply. But uh, if I don't reply, it's just a matter of the sheer volume of, of questions is getting to be a bit overwhelming on, on that. But uh, I do appreciate the interest. So anyway, I'll, I'll show you um, the pattern. Um, in the flask. I actually need to use my 30 gallon flask, which is big by my standards because it won't fit in a five gallon bucket. It's a little too large for that. And uh, the weather here in the Midwest, very cold today. It's zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I wasn't going to pour um, because it was so cold and wait a couple of days, but the wind is absolutely zero. And even though it warms up 20 or 25 degrees here in the next three days or so, the wind picks up and I'd rather pour in these conditions than um, windy and 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, stay tuned, I'll show you a picture in the mold um, after that and uh, we'll get on with it. All right, well, the mold is packed and the stage is set. Um, I'm just gonna wheel that flask straight out that overhead door right there and then uh, there's my furnace, as you can see. I'll grab the crucible out of there and walk out the door and pour it. And as opposed to giving you video of all that, I think I'll probably just snap a few still shots because I just don't want to deal with the sub-zero temperatures and filming and everything, but you'll get the idea. Back with you shortly. All right, everyone, back with you. You saw kind of the uh, staging and aftermath of the pour from the still photos and how the uh, casting came out of the sand. I've uh, 
degated the uh, casting on the table saw. I just set the table saw fence up and ripped these, uh, these gates off of there. And I'm happy to report that we've got a really nice casting. Um, after I degated it, I just took and did a little bit of light media blast on it. So let's have a look at what we got here. So you can see from the front down here in the details um, of the crank seal area. I even got that little cavity there for the tang uh, to cast in pretty nice. Uh, the tunnel for the uh, uh, mechanical fuel pump. You can see, see down the holes there for the uh, water pump. They all cast up nice and clean. Um, there aren't any flaws on this casting. It's, um, it's a really nice casting all the way around. There's the uh, distributor boss and embossment and features inside and out. Get a little bit um, farther out picture there, a look at it. Um, but yeah, this is a nice looking casting. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Gotta tell you, I'm still just amazed this lost foam stuff actually works. <laughs> but it works so darn well with complex castings and cavities and cores that uh, I, it's just an indispensable tool for me. So, uh, yeah, I'll take a couple still photos to close out the video with, but uh, this one's a success. So, thanks for watching.